So, uh, good day, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, very honored to share with you a case study uh, that I've been working on. It's assessing the impact of a managed aquifer recharge on the groundwater system in Yongding River catchment by numerical modeling. Uh, as you may know, Beijing as the capital of China is under rapid urban development. And uh, the total population is around 22 million at the end of uh, the year 2020. Uh, however, the average annual precipitation is only 585 millimeter per year, and this very uneven temporal distribution among the year. 60% uh, of the water supply relies on the groundwater resources. However, because of a 10 year drought from uh, 1999 until 2009, the city's uh, water resources has been overdrafted. Uh, the rivers was cut off, uh, groundwater was heavily overexploited, which also um, arouses other kinds of environmental problems in the city. And the city was seeking for a solution to this water scarcity problem. One of the opportunities are the large scale water transport projects. And one of them is transferring the Yellow River water from the neighboring provinces to the Yongding River catchment in China, in Beijing. And the water diverted from the Yellow River will be released from the upstream reservoir to the river channel. And on the one hand, this uh, water release helps to maintain the environmental flow. And at the same time, the infiltration from the riverbed is augmenting the groundwater recharge. And the water will first go through the mountain area before it arrives in the plain area of the city. And then the discharge is controlled by a sluice which could uh, regulate the water release rate and the duration to the downstream Mars site, which is the um, main research, research area of this study. And this Mars site at the urban area along the Yunding River Channel has been constructed into several lakes and the wetland parks, which um, functions as the recreation of spaces for the citizens and at the same time also largely improved the river Rhine ecosystem. And during the release from the upstream sluice, the released water will be recharged to the aquifer and the total infiltration area is around 10.4 kilometer square. So since 2019, the water release from this sluice has been tested before and after the flood season with the different release rate and duration. And in 2019, in the springtime, 132 million cubic meters were released during 93 days, and uh, 151 million cubic meter uh, has been released in two, uh, 2020 spring during 32 days, and the other 50 million cubic meters were released during 22 days in 2020 autumn. So in order to assess the impact of this MAR project on the groundwater system, we would like to use uh, groundwater modeling to do a simulation. And we expect that by this construction of a 3D groundwater model, uh, we could compute the spatial distribution of the groundwater level change with time, quantifying the recovery of the groundwater storage and the infiltration rate and the maximum infiltration capacity of the riverbed, and also identify the potential hazards related to this MAR project and in the end to optimize the future MAR management in the area. And this model construction is, uh, was based on a regional groundwater flow model of the urban city area of Beijing, which simulates the monthly groundwater flow dynamic from uh, 1995 until 2008. And in this case, we locally refined the grid in the area of interest to simulate the response of groundwater system on the managed aquifer recharge and extend this model simulation period until 2020 uh, with daily stress period. And the model calibration was done by adjusting the hydraulic parameters to match the computed groundwater level with the observations. And as can be seen, most of the groundwater level changes with time at the observation wells can be well captured which uh, verifies the, the, accur the accuracy of uh, this uh, model simulation. And here is uh, the, 
the groundwater level contour map during the three water release event. And the groundwater level <clears throat> under the riverbed and the surrounding areas has been increased significantly. Uh, and the, the maximum groundwater level increase can be more than 20 meters. And uh, from the water balance results, we could uh, clearly see that during the, uh, the groundwater storage has been restored after the implementation of the managed aquifer recharge. And compared to the beginning of 2018, the groundwater recharge has been increased in total 85 million cubic meters. And the infiltration rate for a different part of the Mars side has also been calculated. <clears throat> because of the different um, hydrogeological conditions from the north part to the south part of the Mars side, the infiltration rate for different lakes and wetlands also varies from uh, 0 0.7 meters per day uh, up to 0 0.5. 0 0.5 meters per day. So the surface water and the groundwater <clears throat> actually are hydraulically disconnected at the upstream. So the infiltration rate can always maintain the maximum all the time. However, at the downstream part, after the groundwater level increased during the water release events, groundwater and surface water body becomes hydraulically connected. So the high infiltration rate can no longer be maintained. Therefore, it is. Um, predicted that in the future, the infiltration capacity of the downstream lakes and wetlands will get lower. And another aspect we concern is the efficiency of this water release on recharging the groundwater storage. So compared to the total water release to do, uh, from the upstream sluice, the groundwater recharge efficiency of uh, 2019 spring is around 15% uh, higher than the other two events in 2020, because it has a relatively longer recharge period and a moderate water release rate. But overall, the majority part of the released water uh, has been infiltrated through the river channel and uh, restored the groundwater storage. And besides all the potential, uh, all the positive impact of this uh, MARP project, some potential hazards should also be addressed. Like here, we mapped the area with more than three meters groundwater level increase and the, the area with less than 10 meters groundwater depth after the MAR operation at, uh, in November 2020. And the, the increase of the water level might result in the groundwater pollution since uh, there are several old waste disposal sites in the study area. And uh, these uh, shallow groundwater depths might do damage to some um, underground infrastructures such as the metro stations or the basement of the buildings, which also needs to be monitored frequently in the future. And so from the results above, some recommendations for the future more management of the Union River catchment can be drawn. For, for the MAR operation scheme that we could see longer release water release duration and the uh, lower release rate could uh, improve the groundwater recharge efficiency. And for the risk control aspects, like the high groundwater level needs to be aware during the MAR implementation. And overall, this groundwater model we constructed can be a very effective tool to support the decision makers to test a different future groundwater uh, recharge scenarios and assess the impact of the MAR operation in this uh, highly urbanized uh, groundwater environment. And uh, I think that's uh, all I would like to share until now and welcome all kinds of questions. Thank you. Thank you, Siva. Thank you very much. Um, if you can stop sharing your screen, they can all see us a bit better again. And uh, indeed, I would ask uh, all um, people attending or attendance to add your questions also to the question and answer box. And meanwhile, we have received a few already and we have some time to address them. Uh, so uh, Munip is asking uh, how many groundwater monitoring wells uh, were, were there or were used to quantify the groundwater in your case study? 
And what was the overall time scale or the time, the period of observations on which you base your uh, results? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tibor, and thanks for the questions, Moon. Um, <clears throat> in total, when we construct this uh, uh, regional groundwater uh, model, there were uh, 202 uh, observation uh, of wells through the uh, Beijing Plain area, which is the uh, counts for 6,500 kilometers square mm -hmm. uh, from the shallow aquifer until the deep aquifer. But uh, most of the uh, observation wells were in the shallow aquifer and it's a kind of combined uh, pumping wells also functions as the monitoring wells. And in this uh, Yongding River catchment, the Mars site we studied in this, uh, this research, there, are, there were in total uh, 77 groundwater monitoring wells specifically just around the Mars site, which uh, uh, some of them just located exactly near the riverbed and some mm -hmm. are a little bit further which that we could use them to uh, see the impact area of the this Mars site and also at the same time calibrate this uh, model. Yeah, yeah, th that's quite an impressive number of uh, monitoring wells, I would say. And um, before I go on to our next question, I had one link to that. Uh, you mentioned the rising water level could cause challenges. Yeah. And I'm wondering to how much of the recharged groundwater is being recovered by wells, by pumping wells? Do you have an idea? So, is, or is it purely a recharge without really looking into, um, let's say, recovery of the uh, of the recharged water to avoid also that uh, rise to that would be excessive? Yes, in, uh, in this part of the Mars site, we don't really have a, a intensive groundwater abstraction, so yeah. most of the recharged water will just stay in the aquifer as a storage. And uh, gradually spread during the uh, in the unconfined unconf unconf aquifer, yeah. and uh, which we believe that with the long term op uh, uh, operation, it can uh, it will spread further, which will actually benefit uh, for the drinking water production. And also worth to mention, we have another Mar pilot study in the, another catchment in this area, which is exactly located next to a uh, well field, groundwater well field. So in for that one, the uh, most of the recharged water will be directly uh, abstracted as the uh, groundwater mm -hmm. pumping, which mm -hmm. uh, is a kind of a sustainable way of uh, yeah. using this recharged water. Uh, this actually links to Abraham's question uh, from the audience, uh, which is uh, also a challenging one, I think. Uh, the question is, what is the comparative advantage of using these targeted localized recharge methods along the river uh, as compared to improving infiltration over the entire aquifer or the entire hydrological unit? What do you yeah. think? <clears throat> uh, I would like to say, firstly, this is a, a, actually a very highly urbanized area. We don't really have uh, so many space for uh, the large scale um, infiltration to to replenish the whole hydrological unit. And uh, with the, this uh, specific site uh, recharge, on the one hand, it actually, uh, it re recharges the groundwater. That is our main concern here. But at the same time, it also has some side benefit, like the constructed wetlands parks that we, uh, the people just uh, could uh, just have a walk there to enjoy a, a, a na natural, sense in a very urbanized area, like my parents would just go there for during the weekend for a walk, which uh, they really <laughs> enjoying. And mm -hmm. at the same time, this, uh, this riverbed also uh, actually was, uh, was imp uh, implement some liner in the, uh, at the bottom. So uh, the, re the, the, the recharged water will be stayed in the, in the river as an as a environmental flow, which also benefit the uh, the river rise system, uh, ecosystem that is also a side benefit. Yeah. So that that's what I would say uh, the the benefit of this. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. yeah. 